cousin, did you hear about the who the F did I marry series on TikTok? Girl, I didn't hear about it either until cousin Shay Shay hit me up in one of my comments and say, will you be doing talking about the who TF did I marry series from TikTok? I was like, huh? What's that? Let me go look. I say thanks. I watched part one and I have to leave the others for the cousins. Honey, child, thank you. Girl. Mm. Who the F did I marry? Honey, we gonna have to invite Sister Risa in the fall. We gonna have to invite Sister Risa in the fall. Because see, if R Sister Cousin Risa, we just go in doc, we just gonna take her in, okay? If Cousin Risa had read 23 types of guys you might meet, girl, you would have known who is standing in front of you. And if Cousin Risa had taken the My Husband Profile course, she would have known who that person is standing in front of her. So we just go, go ahead and we going to take her in the cousins, okay? So thanks again to uh, Cousin Shay Shay who sent this to me. Girl, I appreciate it. Ooh, wrong one because if it wasn't for you i wouldn't have known about it i'm sure one of the other cousins would have hit me up so i thank you cousin sister uh for letting me know about this now i'm gonna play just a few of the videos because y'all know i gotta get the kids ready for the day okay and youtube is doing some crazy stuff so i'm playing a little bit of music in the background i don't know if you can hear it but it shouldn't bother you so Cousin Sister Risa, we invite you in the fold over here at the church girls, okay? I think she's the woman of faith. Number one, let me say something to Cousin Sister Risa. Sister Risa, you need to put all of this in a book. I checked this morning and you was at part 52. Girl, this is a book. And the reason why we keep making these dumb, dumb mistakes is because we're not sharing all this information. Granted, now we are in the age of social media, so people can see. But honey, child, put this in a book. And the hard part is you've already told the story. So there are people that will transcribe your story into a book. Girl, hit me up. I can help you. I've published like 20 books. Okay, all my books, honey, put it all in a book. Okay, you need to put all this stuff in a book to help the other ladies that's coming behind us, okay? Dating is for data, because this is Teresa. Dating is for data, okay? So that's number one, because it's Teresa. Okay, number two, it can be transcribed. You have people that can transcribe your story. You already told the story. You just need somebody to transcribe it for you, okay? Number three, because it's Teresa, I'm gonna offer you a free spot in my husband profile course that begins april the 6th uh-huh i i felt led this one the lord laid it on my heart to offer you a free spot in the my husband profile course that begins on uh april 7 because a lot of women who marry narcissists and people like this you usually end up marrying sort of kind of the same guy again because you have to unlearn what you knew and relearn what you know. I know a woman, she married the three, the, 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 she got married three times and all three times she married the same guy in three different men. Okay. And, and, and ladies and cousins, as we listen, I want y'all to tell me who did she meet? Who the F did she marry? He's in here, girl. Every man is in my almost 400 pages book of 23 types of guys you might meet. So we trying to figure it out. Be sure to subscribe, thumbs up. I'm just gonna play about two or three um, because you know, I wanna talk through it and I don't want the videos to be so long, but then I'll just come back and try to keep on making the videos and uploading them. I absolutely love you. I absolutely adore you. I forgot to put my banner up. Again, the husband profile course begins April 6th at 10 a.m. in the morning. The website is there. You could go check that out. Dating is for data is coming very soon. 23 types of guys you might meet is available on Amazon. And if you ever feel so kind to do a one-on-one -on -one with me, 
or support me, everything is below. So let's hear what Cousin Arisa got to say about the who the F did she marry, girl. And I'm I'm speeding it up a little bit, okay? Because YouTube is doing some crazy stuff. Hi, and welcome. We all know Grab your tea, cousin. You're here for part of the new series that I'm calling Who the Fuck Did I Marry? Girl. I'm going to create this playlist series. Um, and I'm going to tell the story of how I met, dated, married, and divorced a real pathological liar. Jesus. Um this is my introduction slash disclaimer video. First yes. and foremost, I'm going to be truthful, yes, even if it makes me look bad. Yes. I'm going to be honest, but I'm also not going to be disrespectful to anyone that was involved. Right. I'm not going to use people's real names because I don't have their permission to do so. Uh -huh. and <laughs> my sister does not want any sort of litigation. Yes. Um, I will tell you off the top, I have a sense of humor and I have sarcasm. Yes. So things that you see me laughing at, none of this is funny. But in order to get through it, I have to laugh. You gotta laugh, girl. If I cry, I cry. I'm cry. human. I'm Go ahead and cry. Give it a minute. Um, I'm going to do the best I can yes. to upload as much of the story as I can. Um, because I know people get so annoyed with the follow for part four. Right. Follow me I for don't part like seven. I'm just gonna do the best I can to keep uploading the videos each at a time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go in order from the time we met yes. until the time. I got our divorce decree in the mail. Oh, thank you. So this that is a lot of time to cover. Mm -hmm. Please give me the grace to just get it out. Um, it may not be all in one day. It may not be all in two days. Take but your what time. I can tell you is even if you don't necessarily, necessarily see a video, I'm probably recording it. And then oh, okay, girl. It That's all right. Titled, Who the Fuck Did Ooh. I Marry? Who did she? Um, what else do I need to cover ahead of time? Because I feel like this video is important to give some sort of context. So that way when people jump into the series, they kind of can figure out, oh, let me start at the introduction video and then work my way through. Uh -huh. um, a lot of the questions that you all have sent me will be answered when yes. I start and tell the story in order. Um, everything I'm going to tell you can be verified. There are people in my life who can easily verify, yes, I know that's happen. right, girl. Yes, he really did do that. He did yes, do he it. Said that. Um, yes, she did go through that. Mm. I have no contact whatsoever with my ex-husband in God. any way, shape, or form. Um, we do not communicate. We do not have mutual friends or anything that we're, where we communicate through those people. Mm -hmm. No contact. Th Good. I cannot stress that enough because I feel like somebody's going to ask me, do you still talk to him? No. no. <laughs> I ain't seen him. I ain't heard from him. I don't want to hear from him. And I will tell the entire story up until the last time I did hear from him and what happened. Yes. Um, yeah. This is this is my story. Yeah. So thank you, girl. Um, I am just a regular woman who thought she met the one. Uh huh. And you thought you met the one. I didn't. Huh? <laughs> um, with three types of guys, girl. Most people have never came in contact with a pathological liar. We typically come in contact with like a compulsive liar. Mm -hmm. It is not the same. Uh huh. A pathological liar has no reason for why they lie. Oh. Uh -huh. And the lies that they make up. There's no limit. For real? To the lie. Girl. Um, I was once a psychology major in undergrad. I didn't graduate with a psychology degree. Uh, but I'm very comfortable saying that he was a pathological liar. He was a narcissist. And girl. And he was a mental, in my opinion, mental health issues going on. What? Pathological lying part. Absolutely. Um, mm. So I want to preface all this by saying, you're going to probably think, what in the world? There's no way this happened. Everything you're going to hear me say actually did happen. Um, I never thought I was going to be in some sort of lifetime movie, but I was. Mm. Um, so I will read the comments as best I can. Yes. Like I said, I think if you allow me to tell the whole story, things will be answered. Mm -hmm. um, and cool. sorry, I do talk with my hands. It's just. That's all right, so girl. We all do. Me so too. If you're like, why is she moving her hands? Um, other than that, let's all take a deep breath. Yes. <gasps> Buckle in. <sighs> Because this was a fucking crazy ride. Jesus. And if you think it's crazy, imagine how I feel as the person who lived it. Girl. And had no idea what I was dealing with. Mm. I thought I knew, but I truly had no you idea. You didn't know, boo boo. Who the fuck I married? Mm. You like how I twisted that? Anyway. All right, y'all. Um, this is the introduction. So, welcome. Part one will be up shortly. Okay. Thank you, girl. Thank you. 
Okay, Please yes, excuse the hair, but that's okay. Yeah, it's part just one of story. who the fuck did I marry? Mm. Um, so I met my ex husband around March fourth of uh -huh. twenty twenty. Okay. We met on Facebook dating site, uh -huh. and we also matched on Hinge. Oh, okay. Um, I did not realize that he was on both um, under two different names. So one what? was his actual name, and the other one was a variation, like a nickname. Oh, okay. Um, that he called himself. Mm different pictures so it was a running joke between us oh you ain't even recognize that um you had matched with me on hinge no, no. i didn't um and also that should have been a red flag red By the flag. Way, you will notice in this story you right. called it the united nations of red flags there's so many red flags that i mean you would have thought i was colorblind because i ignored all of them oh so, anyway, back to the story we met around march 4th we exchanged phone numbers wait, wait, wait. what year me and we talked on the phone um, for the first time. Okay. In the first phone call, he told me that he had just moved to Georgia from California, from San Diego. Mm. His job had transferred him um, because he was being transferred in as the new regional manager okay. for a major condiment company that is based here in Georgia. Okay, sounds good. I won't say the name. And so we also talked about his childhood. He told mm -hmm. me um, he grew up in Philly. He's from Philly. Both of his parents were deceased. This is the first phone call. Ooh. Both of his parents were deceased. His father um, was a Philadelphia police officer. His mom was a teacher. He also told me he um, went, he briefly lived in Augusta. Okay. Um, with his family. He had two brothers and two sisters. He also had two half brothers on his dad's side. First phone call. So I'm just giving you guys the backstory. This was the first phone call we had. So we uh. talked about family. We talked about friends. Oh, we talked oh, about oh, our oh. jobs. So it sound like, girl, cousin uh, uh, Risa, my auntie name is Risa too. It sound like he was rolling you in with talking about the mama, the daddy dead, girl. Both of them dead. And he's reeling you in with the whole story. And what do we say, husband profile? We don't stay on the phone all night with no man. Uh uh, 10 15 minutes for him to plan a date. So that was that was a mistake right there, uh, cousin Risa. Uh huh, girl, you was on that phone with that man for too long, so he could reel you in emotionally. Uh huh, come on, somebody. See, they know how to reel us, they know exactly what to say to reel us in. But go ahead, girl, tell your story. At the time, I was working at Georgia State Patrol. Uh -huh. um, and he knew this, and he just thought that was like, wow, you know? So you work with troopers all day. Right. Yes, I did. Okay, yeah, that's um, good. Also in that phone call, he explained to me that he um, used to play football. Okay. He explained that he used to play arena football. Uh -huh. I what know now? nothing about arena football. I don't know what that is. Um, I know about NFL. I know about college. Yeah, yeah, dogs, NFL. I don't know anything about arena football. So he explained to me football. that he used to play arena football. Uh -huh. He used to work at Apple in the off season of arena football. Oh, okay. Um, and Apple, I remember thinking that on that me? phone call, oh, okay, you know, like, good for you. I don't know anything about arena football. And I believe I did tell him that. I don't know anything about arena football. Me That'll either. come into play later on. Okay, good. So... He told me, you know, I just I just moved here. Um, my job is paying for my housing, be okay. and they are helping me to look for a house. Okay, this he was is like I'm trying right now. I'm in Gwinnett County, but I'm trying to look for a house, ideally in Atlanta, like Brookhaven, um, Sandy Springs. Uh, he was like, I, I really would like to move out there. Okay, and so I thought, you know, this is that's great. You know, you're looking to get a house. You just moved here. Mm -hmm. He's like, I don't really know too too many people here because I spend all my time at work, and you know, this job is really demanding okay so that was our first phone call mm. we talked more he talked a lot which took me by surprise because i'm not really used to men talking more than me that's okay girl that's okay that's okay in the husband profile course we talk about how let them talk you shut your mouth shut your mouth because like my daddy said bishop fresh uh, my father in faith let a man talk he will tell you everything you need to know so when they are running their lips and they're talking, girl, let them talk. Okay, let them talk. Because, see, see, you go pick up on a whole lot of stuff when you let them talk. Go ahead, girl. Um, uh. He eventually asked me out on a date. Okay. Definitely. Our first date was set for Saturday, March 7th, 2020. Wait. Um, he asked girl, me. Girl, during COVID? Girl, was we home in COVID? Girl, you wasn't going out on no date with no man during COVID, is you? Oh, girl. Mm -mm. 
during COVID, sis. Come on, cuz. Come on. My favorite restaurant, I said Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's And okay. so we agreed to go out um, at the Cheesecake Factory in a location that was in between. I lived in Clayton County at the time. Uh -huh. He lived in Gwinnett County. I okay. realized that if you don't know anything about Metro Atlanta, that makes no that's, sense. That's but basically, cool. we lived uh, about 45 minutes apart. Uh -huh. So we agreed to meet at the Cheesecake Factory over at Perimeter Mall, which is in an area, Sandy Springs, Dunwoody area. Okay. I was excited. Like, yeah. I called my friends and was like, I got a date, this you know, blah, blah, this blah. We'll see how it goes. First conversation was good. Uh -huh. um, hopefully, he looks like his pictures because, you know, that's always an issue with online dating. Hopefully, this he looks true. like his pictures. So, on my way to our date, I took 285 and literally right before I got to Boulder Crest, the really? exit for Boulder Crest, I heard a boom Ooh. and I lost control of my car. Oh my God. Thank God that this, thank well, you, not thank God, but I knew what to do. So I yeah. did not crash, but my tire blew out. Oh, wow. So I called him and I said, hey, I'm so sorry, but my tire just blew on 285. I'm slowly making my way off the exit. I believe I pulled into a Chevron gas station and I said, you know, I got to get this fixed. I don't know what to do. Like I'm a damsel in distress kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, damsel in, in stress is good, girl. But let me tell you what my daddy told me. Have AAA. First thing when I got my car, so baby, that's fresh. Get you some AAA so you ain't got to call nobody and you ain't got to depend on no man or nobody to fix your car. Something happened to your car. Get you some AAA. So since you ain't got no AAA, but thank God for the Chevron station that you was able to pull in there and you will say. He kind of paused. He got quiet and he was like, okay. you know, tell me exactly where you are. Drop your pen. So I dropped the pen. Oh my God, girl, the stranger. You tell the stranger exactly where you was at. Girl, what if he was the unaliver? You know, these stories happen all the time on the unaliver channel. Oh, girl, this is why you need some triple. Hey, but anyways, go ahead, girl. Mm, mm, mm. And he came to the gas station. Uh -huh. Came to the gas station, got out the car, and I was I was so relieved that he actually looked like his pictures Ooh, that I was like, oh my God, he's actually a attractive. Because he's like six four. Since I saw the I saw the video of him, he is not attractive. But anyways, everybody attraction is different from everybody. I mean, he could have gotten my number, but okay, if you say he's attractive, girl. Okay, girl. Mm. Four six five. But that's um, the next height though. Oh, also, man. <laughs> I apologize. So let me go back to my first conversation. Let me add something. Uh -huh. He did tell me in the first phone call that he is that he was divorced. Divorced. Um, and that his ex-wife, they had she had um two children, a boy okay. and a girl who were teenagers, young uh -huh. adults. I think the girl was about 20. And he said that he had a very close relationship with his stepkids. Mm -hmm. Um, but that he and his ex-wife had divorced because she cheated on him. Um, out in California. And so coming to Georgia what? was a new beginning for him. Okay. She was still out in California. The kids were still out in California. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, he was like, there's no, I, I can't stand her, but I still want to be in the kids' lives. Okay, that's not I have to put that in there because that will come back later. Okay. So this is just setting the stage again. <clears throat> that first conversation was, we talked about family, family. job, uh -huh. friends, uh -huh. um, how he ended up in Georgia, Too much. me being in Georgia. The things that, you know. Too much, child. Too much on the phone. Too much information. Too much time. Too much of him getting in your heart, in your spirit. You you just giving him too much time. He has done absolutely nothing to earn this time. 15, 20 minutes tops. Okay? We don't stay on the phone for hours and hours talking to no strange man we just met. Girl, no. Oh. This is why you was missing the red flags, girl, because he was all up in your spirit. I would think people talk about numbers <sighs> conversation. All right, now back to the tire blew out. Uh -huh. So he shows up to the gas station. Okay. He changes my tire. Nice. That was nice. Which I just thought was the sexiest thing yes, in the world. That was sexy. Um, and then he proceeds to say, Hey, I found a play a tire place around the corner. <gasps> you need to get another tire. Like you can't drive on this donut. So Oh my God, don't tell me he's about to go with him around the corner where he saw the fire. The, the tire plays, girl. What if he's an unaliver? <gasps> girl, no. He followed me to um he followed me to the to the tire place. Oh god. And then helped me get a tire, oh. paid for it. Oh, that was nice of him. I was definitely like, wow. Um, and so the nice. vibe was good. So anyway, I get the car, I get the tire fixed. We follow each other to the cheesecake factory. Uh-huh over a perimeter. 
Mm -hmm. We hold hands walking into the Cheesecake Factory. So in my This stranger you just met. Girl, you was holding hands with the stranger you just met. Oh, the strange man you just met. You you holding hands. Your, your hands were kissing. Girl, mm -mm. red flag. Come on, I'm like, this is just this. Oh, I got I had butterflies. He that had you. He had you. He had you because he had you because you don't spend all that time on that phone with that man. He don't got up all up in your spirit. He it's, he had you. You was you was had. You was had. Holding hands with a stranger, girl. No. Mm -mm. That's that's the look of a woman who had butterflies. So I had butterflies. Uh -huh. And um we go in, there's a long wait. And so we sit outside and we just talk. Mm -hmm. And the conversation's great. And this is where he tells me. So y'all sat outside, wait for the line, and you talked a whole lot more. Then you go, go sit down and eat and talk a whole lot. Oh, man. Okay, girl. What it is he's looking for. Oh, what he looking for. He tells me, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I believe at the time he was 42. Uh-huh. He was like, I want to get married. And it'd be for real. He's like, my parents were married 40 plus years before my mom passed away and I want that I want marriage family a house like that is what I want he's like I'm you know I'm as a man I'm ready to get married but I want it to be for real because the first time okay. you know it really hurt me when she cheated on me okay so he's telling me everything that I wanted to hear mm. um, and so he's like what is it that you want and I said pretty much the same thing I was like I'm ready to get married definitely want to have a family and He's telling you everything you want to hear. Then you proceed to tell him everything you want. And what do we say in the husband profile course, ladies? What do we say? Keep it general. Keep it general. Mm, mm, mm. And <clears throat> I want to marry my best friend. So we both put on the table that we wanted marriage and this okay, see i got a problem with that i got a problem with that i got a problem with this marrying my best friend thing and i talked about it in my house on profile course uh my my uh 20 tesla guys you might meet because i got questioned so and this is for everybody because we say this foolishness all the time i want to marry my best friend you just met this man you are about to get married in a year and a half you want to tell me this man is your best friend in a year and a half, two years? Gen this is general. Your friend that you've known since you're a child, that's not your best friend. You want him to replace the best friend. I, my husband was not my best friend when I married him. And neither was I his best friend. His best friends are his two fraternity brothers that he's known since he was kids. They are still their best friends. They are our son's godfather fathers them and their wives if anything happened to mike that's who i call my husband's not my best friend my best friend is my girlfriend that i grew up with we 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 had was knees was eyes was at our knees i always had a question with this ladies and you need to be careful of this because men use it to draw you in oh you're my best friend use a lie you use a, that's a lie you're not my best friend because i just met you last year now, after almost 11 years of marriage, Mike and I are becoming best friends. But ladies, in the house, in, in Twitter Test Guys, you might meet, I speak extensively about this, about marrying my best friend. It's a trick. Are you my best friend? No, I'm not. I don't know you like that, and you don't know me. So ladies, watch out for that is the end of part one okay uh-huh okay girl thank you boo all right who the fuck did i marry part two yes girl thank you boo. so we both um put on the table what it is that we wanted we both had established we were dating for marriage we were not dating just to date we were not hold trying on. To hold on hold on hold on hold on how are you dating for marriage this strange man you don't know you don't know him so this is it ladies i talk about this extensively in the husband profile course two or three times the guys you might meet is meeting a man and making him it 
you meet him, you have no information. You don't know if he's a pathological liar, he's a narcissist, you don't know his health information, you don't know how much savings he got, you don't know if he's a good man, does he have a good name, you don't know if he has any investments, you don't know how many kids he got out there, you don't know if he got AIDS, you don't know what his credit report is, you ain't met his mama, talk to his mama, you don't know anything about this man, but this man you met is the man you're about to get married to. So in other words, whatever comes, whatever shows up, whoever he is, you're willing to accept it because you're dating him for marriage and you've already made your decision that this is the man you're going to marry. And this is why ladies, you need the husband profile course. Because I throw all of that out the window. You don't know this man to say you're about to only date him for marriage because you do not have the data. The data, dating is for data. You do not have the data that you need to determine that this man is in fact a good man that you want to marry. And this is why, ladies, we date multiple men at once. What does dating mean? Dating means to do what? Gather data to make an informed decision. Let's say it again. Dating is to skillfully, there's that word, skillfully gather data so that you might make an informed decision. So ladies, while you might want marriage and you're dating for marriage, you do not meet this man and say, he's the one. You don't have the data. I'm all serious. Friends with benefits, and none of that. Um, so the, the dinner at Cheesecake Factory went really well. We laughed, we joked, we talked about people, which um, <laughs> is kind of up my alley, my sense of humor. It was, just, it was a good vibe. Okay, that's so good. at the end of the date, or excuse me, at the end of dinner, we sat in his car and he played this song for me by John Legend. I don't know the name of the song, but- Nate, you got in the car with the stranger you just met, the possibly serial on a liver. What my daddy say, don't you get in that man's car. You don't know him. You don't know if you're safe with him. But she got in the car and he's playing the music. And what is he doing? He is getting deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper in her spirit. And this is why the Bible says you must do what? Guard your heart with all diligence because out of your heart flows what? The issues, the concerns of life. Go ahead, girl. Well, by the time this video posts, I will put the name at the bottom. I can't remember the song. I just remember that John Legend was talking about, I think I met my wife tonight. And I thought it was a sign. So I was like, oh, oh it's a sign. So anyway, we ended up sitting in the car talking just about- Let me just say, there's nothing with, you think you meet your wife tonight. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Okay? Life and experiences until about midnight. Oh, so during this conversation, he, no, no, no. <sighs> deeper, 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 deeper in your spirit. So no matter what comes later, he's already in your spirit. He already got his whole foot, his whole body is in your spirit. Come on, girl. He again is telling me how it was, you know, what it was like living in California, how he went out there. He went to San Diego State. He played football for San Diego State. Um, he talked about how, you know. Did you go look him up and see if he actually went to San Diego State and played football for San Diego State? Life, he loved it out there, so he stayed. Um, that's when he joined the company. Um and then he explained that he also did arena football, but only did it for about two or three years. He claims that while he was- Did you go on LinkedIn and looked him up for the company? He's doing arena football. The team that he was on won a championship. But again, keep in mind, I don't know anything about arena football. So I was like, 
okay, I didn't know that they had championships. Mm. And he was like, you know, he got a little offended, like, yeah, they got championships. And, you know, he was on that team. Mm. So he talked to me about how he worked at Apple. He worked um, something in the IT area of Apple. Okay. But it was in the store. Again, it was one of those, it's like when I tell people I used to work at Amazon. I, I really wasn't paying much attention to it. A lie. So we talked about all that. We talked about, uh, we talked deeply. He into- worked for Apple, but he worked in the store. So he was a sales rep. Stuff like that. <laughs> he's making it sound like he's he's an executive or uh, uh, somebody like that. But he actually worked at the store as a salesperson. That would have been a question for me. To what happened with the ex-wife is because I asked. He was not volunteering all this information. So in other words, I I get very uncomfortable when men start talking about their ex a lot. That's not what happened. I was asking questions because I was really trying to figure out, okay, is this a, are you ready for a relationship or are you still um, missing her? Mm -hmm. So we talked about that. We talked about my exes. That was a mistake I made because I talked about how I dated at one point in time, somebody I worked with. Oh, that wow. will come back later. Uh-huh. Um, and he seemed real cool about it. He was like, you know, that was before me and blah, blah. And this is why you don't be spending all this time talking. You don't do it. You don't do it. Don't do it, girl. Just don't do it. Blah. Um, so the conversation was good. Okay. Midnight comes and um, I go home. Uh-huh. Yes, I went home. We ended up talking, talking, and talking. Mind you, our first date was March 7th. Oh, Jesus. And within about two and a half weeks. Y'all was talking some more after you went home. Girl. Oh, Oh, Lord. She was talking some more, more, and more, and more, and more. And he was just getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Oh, I can't take it no more. I can't take it. I don't know if I'm going to make it through, through this whole series, girl. Brian Kemp, our governor, shut Georgia down. We okay. were about to, we were going to be on lockdown. So during those two and a half weeks, we talked every day. We went out again. Every oh, lockdown. no, 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 no. Don't be talking to no man every day, girl. No, you're supposed to be talking to other men. You talk to him and other men. But you was talking to him every day, all day. Oh, girl, no. Mm, 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 mm. She need a husband profile. Sir, um, I don't need it. I remember Red Lobster. Um, but everything was going great. Fine, girl. The issue was, where are we going to quarantine? So the question was, oh! are we going to quarantine at his place? Wait. Which he had like a studio type of situation the stranger you just met two weeks ago why is that a discussion why was why girl you just met him two weeks ago you just met this stranger two weeks ago so why is where are we going to quarantine at a discussion i need my blood pressure machine I need it for real. I need it. I need to go find it. Like it clearly where he was staying. Um, I was like, it's like a studio apartment, but he kept telling me like this is temporary because. But why is that your problem? I'm gonna have to uncousin you already. I gotta go have to uncousin her. Why is that your problem? This is a strange man you just met. I don't care if he was living under a bridge. He gonna sleep under the bridge because you're a stranger and I don't know you. Oh my God, girl. I'm looking for a house. Like he showed me, he showed me the email from the from a woman who worked at the company where she was out on maternity leave but she was she was putting him in contact <clears throat> with a realtor to help him find a town home or a single family house mm. so i was just like okay this is definitely temporary like he's not trying to stay here long term mm. and she was apologizing in the email i'm so sorry you know this should have been taken care of before you got here but it wasn't <sighs> da, 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 da. i saw the email okay. i saw the email i read it it could be fake. i read the email yeah um, so the decision was 
are you, we going to quarantine at the studio or are we going to quarantine in my house? First mistake I made. Well, there's a So basically, honey, you jump in mommy, mommy roll. You trying to save him. Huh? You jump in mommy mode trying to save this grown ass 42 year old man you just met. At 42 years old, if this is true, this is temporary. There's no problem with him staying in the studio apartment. But if he's supposed to be finding a house, why is he in a studio apartment that he's renting versus an extended stay hotel since we're about to find a house? I just want to know. So you jump in mommy mode trying to save him. I should have worn my, my shirt. Made to be a door. We're not mamas. If you didn't birth him, he's you're not your mom. He's not your son. And you should try to save him. Oh, God. I'm, I'm going to uncousin her before this one is over. I feel it in my spirit. A lot. But this was a mistake I made. So, mm -hmm. ladies, caution moment. During one of our dates, because uh -huh. um, keep in mind, in those two weeks, we were seeing each other quite a bit. Um, nothing so basically in two weeks she was talking to him every day seeing him quite a bit so he knows there's nobody else you's just out here you looking for a man you want a man and he got you and this is why we date multiple men at once this is why we date multiple guys at once don't give one man all your time and all your energy on the phone talking to him going out with him every day every night don't do it. <sighs> Physical or anything like that. Just two people who were who I thought were really on some. All right, let's see if this is going if this if this is going to grow into something. Oh no! Mm -mm. He came to my house. Oh no! When he came to my house, I had a three bedroom, two and a half bath townhome. Mm. Mm. He was in a studio. Now I'm telling you guys all of this in in order of how it happened. So some t some things I'm probably going to insert what I was thinking and the mistake I made. Uh -huh. Okay, that's good, that's good. That's okay, good. So that. um, and I say that to say that I did not realize inviting him to my home um, probably made his eyes go, oh shit, she's a key. Yes! Yes! He's in a studio. You're in a three and a half bedroom house to bathroom. Everybody want to move in. I would want to move in there with you because you have two and a half bathroom, girl. Yes. This is why you don't have them over at your house. Who you live with? My mama, my brother, my sister, my cousin, and the roaches. <laughs> she got this three bedroom, two and a half bath townhouse. And I'm in like a little studio. A studio. Yeah, let me let me let me go ahead and pursue this. What I need to do to quarantine here? Yes. The decision was made quarantine in my house. Oh no. So we the stranger you just met two weeks ago. You don't know if he's an unaliver. You don't know if he's a rapist. Sweet baby Jesus. Stake went on lockdown. He came and stayed with me um, in my home. And for the most part, in the initial beginning, it was fine. It was it was fine. The reason why I hesitate is because I grew up in the church. So for me, it was really like an internal struggle of... So you're shacking up. Huh? Huh, Cousin Risa? You, you're shacking up. Huh? What did the pastor say about that? Did you talk to pastor? Did you go talk to your pastor about this? Did you have the pastor to meet the man? It was COVID. I get it. Through the phone over the phone. No, you didn't. I bet you didn't. Mm-mm-mm. Shacking up, girl. Mm-mm. 
bruh, you always said you would never live with a guy unless he was your husband. Right. And now you living with a dude and he ain't your husband. Like, uh -uh. it was it was a struggle for me yeah. because I knew better. Right. And, and don't come for me. I'm just telling you the way I grew up. It right. was like right, that. Right, it was right. not you sitting too, right girl. with me. But at the same time, I didn't want to quarantine by myself. I did not want to. So there we go. Um, so he moved in. We talked about the bills. Let me clear something up that I so you didn't want to quarantine by yourself but and so you, the only choice was to quarantine with the strange man you just met last week okay all right cuz i said in the other video where i said he paid all the bills he paid all the household bills he did not pay my car payment my cell phone or my car insurance he paid the rent because my rent at the time was less than a thousand dollars. He paid the utility bills, mm -hmm. and on, and so when he's telling me that he's a regional manager, I was like, "Wow, okay, so you got money." Um, <laughs> and so he paid he paid all the household bills. So my check. Did you see the money? Did you see it? He got money, but did you see the money? Really was just taking care of me myself and i mm -hmm. and i am not this is where it's not gonna make me look good but it's the truth it was intoxicating to not have to worry financially about how to pay the bills it Ooh, was a yes, wonderful feel and so i kind of pushed to the side the fact that yeah you're shacking up because it's like but your page you don't have to worry right now like he's he's taking care of all of april's bills before april even comes because this was okay so this is good ladies this is good this is good right because it's that weighing weigh it weigh it he's paying all the bills but you're shacking up so you're just gonna take the shacking up so he could pay all the bills and that's a struggle right ladies this is why we have to draw the the sand line to the sand this is why the husband profile you figure out what it is you want you don't want to shack up okay because now you're weighing that you're you're you are putting your soul in jeopardy because if Jesus cracked the sky, baby, you bust a hell wide open because you're living with the man you're not married to, and that's not your brother, your uncle, or your cousin, or your dad. So that's a good point she made, right? It's that scripture talks about weigh it, weigh it to see. Okay. So March. So. We're living together and I'm up. cooking, I'm cleaning. He's helping to cook and clean. And then we have a conversation about house. Is he still going to buy a house just for him? Or is he going to buy a house where it's for us? Because we are going to try to. You just met him last week. <laughs> you just met him last week. Okay. You just met him last week cause. <laughs> Make this thing work. Be official, get married, have a family. Mm. So the question now on the table is, what are we going to do? Because I didn't want to stay in um, Riverdale, Georgia. I did not want to raise a family there. Mm. I refused to have a baby um, in Clayton County. So the decision was made. Let's start looking for a house for both. He got Ooh. a house for him. But then he was like, you know what? We're together. I plan to marry you. Let's look for a, for a, a family home for the two of us. Mm. He was like, this is how much I was approved for. That's when he showed me the Chase paperwork. Um, it was a letter stating that he, and it had the Chase emblem at the top. He showed me a letter stating that he was approved for 700. And All right, part three, who the fuck did I marry? So this is when he showed me a letter from Chase with the Chase logo at the top, stating that he had been approved for a mortgage, for, excuse me, for a $750,000 mortgage or 700. Okay, hold up. Okay. Maybe this is something new. But when my husband got the approval letter, it was a packet. Can somebody help me out? Is it was it just a letter, one piece of paper, or was it a packet? My husband, the packet is still in there, right? The packet of your approved, this is how much you're approved for, is still in our den in the in the folder. It's a packet that lists all the money, all the debts, 
all the um <clears throat> li liability all the his assets right maybe this is different maybe it's different that was 11 years ago miles and i've been married 11 years that was 11 years ago but 11 years ago the approval packet from the bank it was not a letter it was a packet that list how much you're approved for your assets your liability everything it is still in there so is it different now is it just a piece of letter that says oh you're approved for seven hundred fifty thousand dollars my husband was approved for 500 11 years ago we got a house for 250. help me out in the comments what time is it fifty thousand dollar house so he was like we can't go over 750. and i said i remember asking him can you afford the mortgage on a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar house because i know i can't this is Ooh, say that again baby say it again bank and he had an offshore account this is what he told me so he paid he paid all the household bills let's start looking for a house for both of us mm -hmm. remember he was already looking for a house for him but then he was like you know what we're together i plan to marry you let's look for a for a, a family home for the two of us okay he was like this is how much i was approved for that's when he showed me the chase paperwork um it was a letter stating that he and it had the chase emblem at the top he showed me a letter stating that he was approved for 700 and all right part three who the fuck did i marry so this is when he showed me a letter from Chase with the Chase logo at the top stating that he had been approved for a mortgage for, excuse me, for a $750,000 mortgage or a $750,000 house. So he was like, we can't go over seven fifty. And I said, I remember asking him, can you afford the mortgage on a $750,000 house? Because I know I can. This is when he explained that's, that's to me. That's good. I told that's a good question. Can you afford the mortgage on a $750,000 house? Because I know I can't. This is good. Because a lot of people are house poor. So if you, if you, this is financial advice, check out uh, Freedom, my Freedom Money channel that I need to do some videos on. If you're approved for a $750,000 house, you need to be getting a four fifty dollars house. A $400,000 house. You, if you, that's what you need to get. So that's a good question. She asks, can you afford the mortgage? Because I know I can't. So ladies, this is where wisdom come in when y'all about to go buy this house. And he's like, we approve for 500. We're going to get a 555 house. No wives. Wisdom. Wisdom, ladies. Use your wisdom. We don't, we don't need a $500,000 house. We need a 250, maybe a $300,000 house. Okay? I told you how I played arena football. I invested my money really well. So he said, I have money that will help pay for the mortgage he was like we're good like i'm did you see the money did you go to the bank pull up the account and did you see the money uh, financially i am okay um he was like that's why i'm able to get approved for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar mortgage so he told me that his money was in different savings accounts he said he had an account with chase bank he had an account with u.s bank and he had an offshore account. This is what he told me. He got all this money in banks getting 0.000.1% interest. There are no investments account. There's no Roth IRA. There's no 457. There's no 401k. There's no SEPT IRA. There's no taxable investment account. It's all sitting in the bank. There's no high interest savings account. There's no money market account. There's no Vanguard. There's no Fidelity. There's no Schwab. N none of that. It's just sitting in the bank. In the regular bank at that. 
Okay, girl. So, the offshore account, I was like, why? And he explained something about, oh, the U.S., <clears throat> excuse me, the U.S. imposes taxes on money when you have a certain amount in, in U.S. banks. He was like, so everybody knows that it's smart to have some money in an offshore account. Y'all, look, I live paycheck to paycheck. I, Girl, what? <laughs> what? Wells Fargo just sent me the, the, my yearly, oh, we paid just seven cents in interest. You have to pay taxes on it. What? Oh, if you have a certain amount, you got to pay taxes. Everybody got to pay taxes. It could be $2.50. You got to pay taxes on it. The guy, I, uh, Uncle Sam wants his money. Oh, girl. Hmm. Ooh, girl, you're gullible. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No. Man, if he ever, ever sees this TikTok, I owe this man a house where it's for us because we are going to try to make this thing I'm work. In the official because I stating that he was approved for 700 and all right, part three, who the f contacted a realtor in <clears throat> who was based in Cobb County because I was very adamant I wanted to move back to Marietta, Smyrna area um, in Cobb County, Georgia. He was fine with that. His whole attitude was- Let me rewind a little. I'm sorry, I think I missed something. We're asking him, can you afford the mortgage right. on a $750,000 house? Because I know I can. Uh -huh. This is when he explains to me, I told you how I played arena football. I invested my money really well. So he said, I have money that will help pay for the mortgage. He was like, we're good. Like I'm I financially, I am okay. Um, he was like, that's why I'm able to get approved for a $750,000 mortgage. Mm -hmm. So he told me that his money was in different savings accounts. He said he had an account with Chase Bank. Savings account. He had an account with US Bank and he had an offshore account. This is what he told me. The offshore account, I was like, why? And he explained something about, oh, the U.S., <clears throat> excuse me, the U.S. imposes taxes on. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. What? Uh huh. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, shoot. Y'all not see what's going on. I gotta go back. I'm sorry, y'all. It, it would have to be a virtual tour. Hold so on. This I'm sorry. So this particular realtor, we found a house in Douglasville. 26, 26. Bank, and he had an offshore account. This is what he told me. Uh -huh. The offshore account, I was like, why? And he explained something about, oh, the U.S., <clears throat> excuse me, the U.S. imposes taxes on money when you have a certain amount in, in U.S. banks. He was like, so everybody knows that it's smart to have some money in an offshore account. Y'all, look, I live paycheck to paycheck. I, again, I was like, okay, that's whatever. Mm -hmm. I said, so you have the, so you have the money um, to, pay for, to pay for a home. Uh -huh. I'm also holding in my hand a letter from Chase. A letter. Not a pack. A letter. So I went off of what I saw. Mm. So we contacted a realtor. I won't say his name, but man, if he ever, ever sees this TikTok, I owe this man such an apology. Look at that. But we contacted a realtor in <clears throat> who was based in Cobb County because I was very adamant I wanted to move back to Marietta, Smyrna area yes. um, in Cobb County, Georgia. Oh, okay. He was fine with that. Mm. His whole attitude was, you know, you're going to be my wife, happy wife, happy life. Mm -hmm. So we met a realtor. I, I would find houses 
that I wanted to tour. Mm. Keep in mind that um, this was COVID. So at the time, we could not tour a home. Right. It would have to it would have to be a virtual tour. Okay. So this particular realtor, we found a house in Douglasville, Georgia. Not Cobb County, but nevertheless it's in Douglasville. I was fine with Douglasville. So we found a house in Douglasville, Georgia. The realtor did a um a, a, a FaceTime tour of the house. The house was it was really a nice, it was a nice home. Mm. Four five bedrooms, four baths. Ooh. So we did a FaceTime tour of the home. Mm-hmm. And the home was listed, I believe, roughly four hundred and something thousand. I really like the house. I could see myself living there. I could see us. Good. And that's all you should have gotten for something, because that's all you could afford. Okay. Good. Us living there. Yeah. You could see us with the kid there. This is now April. Mm-hmm. Just for timeline purposes. This is April. Okay. So he really liked the house. He was like, you know what? We'll put an offer in on the house. He was like, if you like it, because again, it was COVID. We weren't going to be able to see the house in person because the family still live there. So he said, um, I'll put an offer in. We'll see this accepted. Mm-hmm. I said, okay. So he puts an offer in. He's telling me he put an offer in. I need to clarify some things he told me and the things that I actually saw. So for this house in Douglasville, he told me he was putting an offer in. The realtor would call me because one thing that the realtor told us, he was like, if the woman likes the house, typically the house is going to get bought. Yeah. So he kind of dealt with me a bit more than he did my ex-husband. This is true. This is true. <laughs> this is true, y'all. This is true. Because when we would, we would look around for house, uh, Mike and R- R- Felix, Felix, my realtor, they would just stand off to the car. Mike would just stand over there. He wouldn't even like, you like, if you like it, I love it. Okay. And so I'd be like, Mike, do you like it? He's like, baby, do you like it? I'm like, I love it. He said, we about, I don't like it. He's like, okay, we're not getting it. As a matter of fact, when I found this house, my husband was, uh, fiance then was traveling and he was like, do you love it? I say, I love it. He said, okay. Go on down to uh, Felix and sign the paper. When I come come back, I'll 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 resign all the paperwork. This is true. The men know if the woman loved the house, that's the house we gonna get. That's a good one. Um, and again, this is April twenty twenty. This is before we got married. So mm. at the time, he was my boyfriend. Uh huh. So the realtor was calling me and it was like, "Hey, you know, I'm I'm I put the offer in, and what they're asking for um, is proof of funds." Ooh. And I know any. I don't. I did not know anything. Thank you. Proof of funds. Exactly. Proof of funds. Because when the mortgage come, when the bank, we went with the bank. When the bank gives you an offer, they've already calculated everything. They've calculated your income they've calculated your savings they've calculated your 401k they've calculated your retirement account they've calculated everything and they've looked at your debts towards your assets and they determine based on all of these things this is how much you are eligible for like i said the thing is still in the den. Everything is on there. Everything, and you had to provide paperwork of everything you have. All, everything is on there. Everything is on the packet that the bank runs. Everything, they put everything in there. Everything. And they calculate it, and they say, this is how much you are eligible for so that's why they're asking for proof of funds see when you when you go to the realtor with your packet the realtor does he get a copy of it you give him a copy i don't remember but the realtor knows this is how much you're you're eligible for so poor thing didn't even know he was lying because that's why they need proof of funds. Proof of funds. What are you going to use? And your credit score, right? They run your credit score. They say your credit score is this month. Thank you, Holy Ghost. They run your credit. 
your credit score, look at your debts, look at your assets, look how much money you have, everything. And that's how, what you're eligible for. Come on, church. Mm, mm, mm. At this time about buying a house. So I was like, hey, you probably need to talk to him because I'm not even listed on the mortgage. Like from the paperwork I saw, it was only in his name. What? So he, um, he called him, I guess they talked. I was not there. Um, but I'm assuming that they had talked. Mm -hmm. So the boyfriend is coming, my ex is coming home saying, yeah, I talked to so-and-so. I sent him over the paperwork. The offer was approved and <clears throat> they are going to try to do a virtual closing. First, we gotta do an inspection. If the inspection goes all well, then we have to do a virtual closing. Oh. He also told me that he put down earnest money on the home. He put down, I believe 5,000. He said, I, I just transferred the money over to the realtor's uh, account or whatever um, so that it could be earnest money for the house. So I'm just like, okay, great. He was like, so realistically, this is April. Earnest money. What's that? Let me think. I don't know. 11 years ago, you find the, the offer, the house, you go down to the realtor office, you sign the paperwork, you put your offer in. That realtor send it to the other realtor. If they accept, they accept. Then the lawyers start writing stuff up. Then you have to do your inspection. There's no money. There is no down payment. There's no money transfer until all the paperwork goes through. The bank, um, the, the lawyer said, run, that has to do the title search to make sure there's no lien against it. We had an oil tank. My lawyer was like, I am not closing on this house with the oil tank. Listen to me. I've been doing this for years and years and years. If you like this house and you want to close on this house with the oil tank in the ground, you're going to have to get you another lawyer. But I am not closing on this house. And I want you to listen to me. I'm going to put in that the sellers take up the oil tank and my lawyer fight with that lawyer and they agreed we gonna pick up the oil tank then after they take up the oil tank then the state has to come and test the ground which is why it took us seven months to close we found the house in, in january we didn't close till july because they had to do all of that then the inspector had to come and did da, 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 and all of that and then finally when everything is done they put on the contract. That's what that sign mean out there. The sign outside means on the contract. That means somebody already put an offer on the house and the offer is accepted. But to my knowledge, there is no money transfer. There is no transference of money until the day of closing. It could be different in 20 and 20, but I don't know. Y'all tell me in the comments below. Bro, we should be able to get in that house um, by June. Okay? okay, no problem. So, this is what he told me. Jesus. About three or four days later, I get a phone call from the from the realtor, and the realtor is like, "Hey, I'm just checking to see what you know what you guys want to do about that house." So I was confused. I'm at work, um, and I said, "Oh, I, I was told that he put an offer in." What? And the realtor was like, "He did." I didn't know that he put an offer in. And I said, well, well, why wouldn't you know? Like he told me he put the offer in and he um, he had paid earnest money, $5,000 earnest money. And so the realtor was like, well, let me call him and find out what's going on with that. Because I didn't know anything about it. So red flag, of course. Right. So I call him and, he's, and he, in true narcissistic nature, he flips the script and he like goes off. He's like cussing, going off. Like he shouldn't, excuse me, I have the hiccups. He shouldn't be calling you. If he has a question, he should call me oh. because I'm the one that's on a mortgage. He was like, and now it's, you know, it's going to be an issue. And I said, well, did you put the offer in with him or not? And he said, no, I did not put the offer in with him. I put the offer in with a friend of mine who is a realtor so I can give him the business. Child, hold on. Mm, hello? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. I apologize. That was the state calling to check up on Lexi. You know, when these numbers call, you got to answer because you don't know who's calling. Good thing I answered. That was her new support coordinator. All right, let's finish part three and then I have to go. All right. So 
Mm-hmm. I never, I did not hear from that realtor again. So I was just like, what? Is the house under contract or is it not? Is he was like, yes, the house is under contract. This is, this is how crazy things work out. About three days later on realtor.com, mm-hmm. I'm looking at the house because I was trying to figure out in my mind how I'm going to decorate. It shows the house is under contract. So show my boyfriend. My boyfriend's like, I told you it was under contract. Ooh. He was like, I, I, like, did you not believe me? And I ain't had a heart to say, hell no, I didn't believe you. <laughs> like, it seemed too good to be true. Um, but once I saw the house was under contract, mm-hmm. I absolutely believe that, okay, th- it's under contract with him. Like, yeah, we're about to do inspection. We are about to move. Um, mm-hmm. And so we had driven by the house because, again, keep in mind, a family's still living there. So we had driven by the house. At this point, he was like, I want us to start looking for furniture so that way we can go ahead and order it. So when, when it's time to move, the furniture is ready because, you know, it takes like six to eight weeks sometimes um, for furniture to be delivered if they don't have it in stock. Okay. Like he was he was very methodical in planning and saying this is what we need to do. Mm-hmm. So we started going to Home, Home Depot, Lowe's, um, because we had a printout of what the sellers were going to take. They were going to take the appliances. He had a printout. Let me be clear. He, he had a printout. He had so a printout. on there that they were going to take the appliances. Yeah. So we needed to get a new stove, um, new refrigerator, new microwave, all that stuff. So we yeah. went to Home Depot and Lowe's and I, I went ham. I chose all these new appliances and here's where we get into the shopping. All right, part four. Okay, no, we're going to stop here because I got to go, child. I got to get the kids ready for school. Okay, I got you. You, 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 you this is too much. <laughs> I was gonna say, and th- this is in a month of meeting this guy, right? Okay, cuz I gotta go, girl. I love y'all. Love. I'm gonna be back. I'm gonna be back. I'm gonna be back later. I'm gonna be back. Let me know what you think so far. You know how I talk and do my commentary. YouTube is doing a whole lot of crazy stuff. So I, I think what I did was okay. I won't get in trouble because now they're sending out copyrights and this person have your video. You playing this. I can't with YouTube. Love you. I want to remind you the husband profile, Risa. You have a free spot in the My Husband Profile course. Dating is for dating is coming very soon. 23 types of guys. Who did Risa marry? We're going to figure it out in my book. 23 types of guys available on Amazon. Love y'all. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.